Beam final was always the most stressful. I just liked it. Uh, yeah. If even the gymnastics goat herself finds something about the balance beam routines challenging, what does that say for the others, right? To be fair, although gymnastics may look easy for mere spectators, it is a rather demanding sport, both physically and mentally. On that note, the balance beam is considered to be one of the core competitive gymnastics events within a broader sport known as women's artistic gymnastics. Do not be mistaken though, both men and women compete in artistic gymnastics. However, the balance beam events are unique to female gymnasts in the Olympic Games and other international competitions. As many of you know, artistic gymnastics propels athletes through feats of strength, agility, and grace via a wide array of acrobatic events, including floor exercise, balance beam, uneven bars, parallel bars, high beam, vault, rings, and pommel horse. But then, like earlier mentioned, the balance beam is considered to be the core of it all. In the balance beam competition, gymnasts perform routines on a four-inch wide solid beam. They must present the same grace and execution one might expect if they were performing on the floor. A balance beam routine may not exceed 90 seconds and must cover the entire length of the beam. Handsprings, back handsprings, saltos, back saltos, turns, and split jumps are all gymnastic skills that are common to beam routines. The key balance beam apparatus is the beam itself. In artistic gymnastics, gymnasts are judged by the code of points a rule book issued by the International Gymnastics Federation that outlines the point values of various skills in international competition. A gymnast's final score is calculated from a start value, where the gymnast begins with the highest possible score and then has points deducted for elements that may have been lacking in their routine. A technical committee of judges determines these deductions. Judges look for routines that showcase excellent acrobatic skills, height, flexibility, and power. In the past, FIG scores used to have a maximum value of 10. In 2006, however, FIG altered its system to factor the difficulty of skills and routines into its scores. These days, the total score for a gymnast's routine is actually the sum of two scores, the difficulty score, or D, and the execution score, E. The beam was originally a longer, narrower apparatus, and while the concept of standing gracefully on a high surface is primordial, over time it also became an art, evolving into one of gymnastics' most beautiful and challenging apparatus. After all, performing skills on a thin beam less than four inches wide and four feet off the ground requires immense skill, balance, and courage. While the sport has evolved rapidly, with gymnasts performing increasingly difficult skills, there are some skills that were once popular but are now rarely, if ever, performed in competition. At the top of the list is the Tsukahara Dismount. The Tsukahara is a family of aerial skills named after Japanese gymnast Mitsuo Tsukahara, who pioneered several variations in the 1950s and 1960s. The most common Tsukahara Dismount off-beam is a backward salto tucked, this dismount was very common in the 1960s and 1970s. Larisa Petrik of the Soviet Union famously performed a Tsukahara dismount during her gold medal winning beam routine at the 1970 World Championships. During the 1980s, as gymnastics difficulty increased rapidly, the Tsukahara dismount declined in popularity in favor of higher rated dismounts like double salto variations. While the Tsukahara dismount is still technically feasible to perform today, it is valued at only a D difficulty score, making it easy for gymnasts to gain more points from other more difficult dismounts. The last prominent use of the Tsukahara dismount was by Henrietta Onodi of Hungary, who performed it consistently during her competitive career in the late 1980s and early 1990s. Then there's the Salibus mount, the Salibus is an acrobatic mount onto the beam invented by Romanian gymnast Daniela Silivas. It consists of a neck stand with a half turn whilst inverted. Silivas unveiled this creative beam mount during her dominant run to the 1987 World Championship title, where she utilized it to mount and then again in combination later in her routine. The difficulty of mounting onto the narrow beam surface in a split position whilst resting body weight on the neck 
made it an impressive and unique skill that other gymnasts struggled to replicate successfully. The Tez, on the other hand, was a skill first performed on the beam in the late 1990s. It is named after French gymnast Elvira Teza, who pioneered the skill. The Teza consists of a full twisting back handspring into back hip circle while side onto the beam. This skill showcased difficult acrobatics, precision, and the ability to link two skills smoothly. Although it gained some brief popularity with other top gymnasts, the catch of the beam at the end of the back handspring was particularly brutal on the gymnast's hips and stomach. Arguably, Worley is possibly the most unique skill. It is named after its creator and the only gymnast to perform it in a major competition, American Shayla Worley. The Worley starts as a back handspring, but the gymnast completes a half turn before the hands are placed so they finish facing forward like a front handspring would do. First performed in 2007, it was never picked up by any other gymnast, probably because of the high level of precision needed. The skill received an upgrade in the code of points in 2017, but this still did not encourage any gymnasts to include it in their routines. Chinese gymnast Li Li also had a skill named after her in 1990, the Li Turn. When done successfully, the Li involves spinning on the back one and a quarter times, whilst the legs are in the kip position. It showcased balance, control, and grace on the beam, and helped transition into moves low to the beam or even underneath it. By the mid-1990s, the Li Turn had grown into a popular element on beam. Prominent gymnasts utilized it during their routines, but the coordination and precise technique required to perform the continuous spin without error proved difficult for many gymnasts to develop consistently. As acrobatic skills advanced, the lay turn decreased in popularity in favor of higher difficulty. By the early 2000s, it was rare to see an elite routines. Finally, the Dunn Mount. It involves a back handspring with a half turn into a forward walkover. First performed by Australian Jackie Dunn, it is also known as the Onodi Mount or Arabian Walkover Mount. This is a distinctive but rare mount. When a gymnast pulls it off, there is no doubt it looks visually stunning. However, the precision needed is very high. Gymnasts are only able to spot the beam very late, owing to the half turn, and a minor error will cause the routine to be over before it's even started. The Dunn Mount was yet another beneficiary of the 2017 upgrades to difficulty values in the code of points. Very few gymnasts still choose to use this mount in their routines. It is important to note, though, that the atmosphere also affects a gymnast's execution. The best example would probably be Team USA's experience at the Paris Olympics. The Bercy Arena was apparently so quiet during the balance beam finals at the Paris Olympics. Four gymnasts, including Americans Simone Biles and Suni Lee, fell off the beam. Supposedly, the lack of music in a hushed crowd may have played a part. Usually we have like music or background noise, whatever that may be. And honestly, we do better in environments when there's noise going on because it feels most- The night of the competition itself, though, it was quiet. And when it wasn't? And then people start cheering and then the shushing gets louder. So really they should be shushed because they're louder than them. I don't know, it was- It turns out and we've asked several times if we can have some music um, or some background noise, so I'm not really sure what happened there, but yeah, not our favorite. None of us liked it. Lee jokingly said she worried whether the photographers could hear her breathe. It adds to the stress, just because it's like, you, yes, you're the only one up there, so I was feeling the pressure. Well, that's that. Watch what other athletes face, whether during competitions or outside of it.